going to speak on the state of the city. Jared. Thank you, Neil. It's been an interesting night already. Uh, um, it, it, Brad mentioning working on uh, McGovern's campaign was the first precinct walk I ever did was for McGovern. I was in Connecticut at the time, by the way. I was, I was talking about a submarine coming through the wall. I was on submarine station at the sub base in Connecticut and, uh, and working for the McGovern campaign. So that, that took me back a few years, by the way. So um, Don Gakel, by the way, he's been pretty bashful, I think, there. Um, I've known Don a while. Was your dad the CEO of this county? He was the CAO of the county back okay. then. Okay. So the, the number one guy, right, of the county, uh, yeah. And a real train guy, by the way. I mean, this guy lived and breathed trains. Is that right? Absolutely. So, uh, Absolutely. so we'll miss him. Street is passion. He was, he, um, was, uh, he was on uh, two phone calls regarding trains the day he died. Okay. So, <laughs> he was right to the end. So uh, Don all, also is endorsed by his predecessor, Dave Cogdell, junior, uh, senior, Dave Cogdell, um, a Republican, and Dave's predecessor, uh, Doug Harms, a Democrat. Uh, and I think they both worked with him. They both led the organization he was a member of at the time. And I don't think you can get much better credentials than to say, this is the right guy. So. Are you also uh, endorsed by, and people would remember, Mike Deferrari, also a okay. Republican? Yeah, yeah. So, so um, I, I really encourage you to uh, step up for, for Don. I'm not going to go through my 10 pages as I even reduced the size State of the City speech. Um, but I'll, I'll just kind of peruse some of the, some of the parts of it. And, and really, uh, it took almost 30 minutes. And I don't want to, uh, I don't want to keep you here that long if you don't want to be. But I'll, I'll take questions. I really like to take questions. Uh, Talk, talk with you about what's important to you and not what I wrote down here. So, um, but I'll, 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 I'll skim through a lot of the part that I have just to hit the high points and um, from that take questions. Uh, as, as most of you know, the city's currently undertaking a general plan update. The city should, on, on perfect conditions, every 10 years, come back and redo its general plan. A uh, general plan's a 30 or 40 year document. And who of us know what we're gonna look like in 30 or 40 years? I mean, none of us have a clue of, of really exactly what it's gonna look like. And so if you do it right, you plan for 40 years, but then 10 years from now, you update that. How, are we on course, are we off course? Um, <laughs> Has the world economy half well, half well, halfway gone into the, into the dumps, and um, and we haven't had any change in in six or seven years now as far as uh, growth, um, and and so every ten years you're supposed to update. Well, in '95 um, we did our general plan. 2005 we should have updated it, but we were in a financial problem at, in 2005. Wait a minute, I thought that was 2008. Well, actually, if you go back and look, we thought we were in trouble in 2005. And that was before we started really taking off, but the state had had problems and stuff. And, and so the city thought that they were needing to draw in enough that they'd hold off doing a general plan uh, update, a full-scale a full scale comprehensive one. And so then in 2008, it got serious. We realized we really couldn't, didn't have the dollars. It cost about three or four million dollars to do a general plan, a comprehensive general plan update. And takes three or four or five years. It's not something that can happen quickly. Um, I think it's really interesting that currently our, I'm not on my, I'm not on my um, <coughs> sheet here, by the way. Currently, we, um, the, the conservative, members of our city council have been pushing to do a comprehensive general plan update and the more uh, non-conservative have have resisted 
Uh, so here the conservatives are spend, saying, spend millions of dollars on consultants and printing piles of paper. And the, and the liberals are saying, no, don't do that. Uh, I, I actually kind of think that that's kind of an interesting uh, uh, juxtaposition of, of what normally people envision um, the different, the different um, ends of the spectrum doing. We will be putting a general a comprehensive general plan update onto our council agenda for April 8th. And, and my goal would be to finish the amendment that we're in the process of doing. And upon ado adoption of that, about a year, year and a half from now, we'll then roll the information from that and the money spent on doing the EIR and some of that into a comprehensive that will then take us out probably four more years to actually get that approved. Um, anyway, it's very difficult for people to understand and, and to accept change. None of us like to turn gray. I've got a little on the side here. Applying for Social Security this month, by the way. I'm already on Medicare. Uh, wrinkles. I mean, you know, we don't like change. And it also is true of not liking change of who's moving in next door or what's happening a block away or whatever. And for a city to plan for 40 years from now means that there's going to be change. And it's a very uncomfortable thing for a lot of people. Uh, part of what I did talk about actually on my, my speech was California today is growing at 1% with zero immigration in, zero net immigration in or out, zero. We're still growing at 1% a year. We're growing at 1% a year because we're still having families and we're not dying fast enough. I mean, and, and I believe that's actually going to continue to accelerate, that medicine and better lifestyles and better understanding of, 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 of exercise and everything else, we will continue to live longer and longer, and we're still going to have children. We are adding 300,000 people to California a year right now just because of the difference between death and birth rate. Nothing else. No, no people coming from Mexico or China or Kansas or anywhere else. Um, you know, people are moving out to Texas, but they're moving in from Montana. Uh, you know, I mean, our our net our net flow right now with the with the economy the way it is is zero, but we're adding 300,000 people a year. That means Modesto. If everybody stayed here, nobody left, nobody came. We would add 2,000 people a year for the next 40 years. It's 100,000 more people, 100,000. And we have to plan for that. And people don't like what that means. I mean, they just don't. They go, well, why don't you just stop where you are? Our, 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 the reality is, is we have enough land in our current sphere of influence, what we currently have been given rights to use by, by LAFCO, we have enough land for all the housing we need without adding any more acres at all for houses. No more, no more acres for apartments, houses, whatever it is. We can, we, can, we can fulfill the needs of our community with what's already been accepted since 1972, by the way. In fact, we are Part of our general plan update that we've approved, if, if the amendment's passed, is we're going to end up giving back about 2,000 acres that's already been in our general plan. Because we've got plans for downtown to be three, four, five stories high and make condos and apartments and stuff like that. We've already said that from now on we're going to build at seven and a half units an acre instead of five units an acre per acre. Between those, we don't need a lot of the land that we already have in our general plan in our current sphere of influence. And we're going to return 2,000 acres um, 
a net of 2,000 acres from where we were. Um, there'll be a vote next week, a week from tomorrow, on taking about a thousand acres of, of what's called wood colony out of out of ag designation that we have right now and just taking it off our general plan totally. Um, I'm going to vote for that by the way and I think it's a mistake of the people that want us to do that. Um, if it were in the if it was in our general plan as green as ag it it doesn't put the city of Modesto one step, one second, one motion closer to enveloping that than if it was totally out of our general plan. Um, I think it's a protection of the people that live there to say the city's designated that ag when somebody comes into the county level and says we want to put in a um, a truck stop, a veterinary office, a whatever other use that they want, they can say, wait a minute, you're, you've always agreed that you're going to abide by the city's rules and you're, you're not doing that. And um, the people of Wood Colony don't believe us. And, and so because they don't believe us, because they don't trust us, I'm going to vote to take that out. Uh, you know, and, and we will end up taking that, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't think it's in their best interest, but they don't trust us politicians. Um, anyway, so that's, that was one minute of my, of my speech the other night, by the way. Um, so I'm going to just um, run through here. Um, oh, by the way, um, City of Modesto and Waterford are working along to have a ag zone between Modesto and Waterford. We're going to agree to go no farther um, east. They're going to agree to go no further west between Dry Creek and the, and the Tuolumne River. Make that an, basically an ag zone. Um, we're trying to work out legal um, descriptions between our offices. And we're trying to think about bringing the county on board as, as kind of signing on to that also because one of our real frustrations over the years for cities is for the cities to designate something and then the county come in right on the edge and, and build it. Um, part of our general plan update, by the way, two very, in, three, three very important things I think are going on that need to be done with this amendment. One is without an environmental impact report being completed, we cannot put a residential urban limit line on the ballot next uh, November of 15. We voted as a city to do that, but we have to have an EIR done in advance of that for it to actually be put on the ballot. And I've, I've really thought that part of the reason that there was all of a sudden a push to not do this amendment and do a comprehensive general plan update was so that they could keep that off the ballot. There were two other things that were proposals in this update, this amendment, that I think were essential to ag preservation. One was, hi Jenny, <laughs> Ms. Knoyer's uh, motion to uh, put ag mitigation as a policy of the city of Modesto, which means if we ever take another acre into the city, we will for put a acre into agricultural preservation forever. So every time we take an acre in, we'll preserve an acre. Um, I've always been a believer in ag mitigation. Uh, some people say, well, it doesn't do you any good. You're, it means you're going to still use up and pave over half the land. Well, for years and years and years, we've been paving over half the land and not saving the other half. And we can continue to go, well, you should have been doing that 20 years ago. Yeah, we should have, but let's start sooner or later. And, and thank you, Jenny. I, I, think, I think you've been a, a, a perfect person to have on our city council because of that motion, if nothing else. Um, we, we 
we can um, really save our, our ag future. We can stop from being San Jose or stop from being LA um, by doing this. We'll still use some land up. I mean, we're still going to, you have to, you have to put 100,000 people somewhere or 150 or 200,000. Um, but as we do that, we can, we can save a lot of land. We just, um, we annexed uh, Tivoli a little over two years ago. Almost 500 acres. If we'd had ag mitigation, the CEQA on that, by the way, called for it to be mitigated, and the council, against my vote, uh, chose not to do that. That 500 acres could have been the 500 acres that we're talking about in Wood Colony right now. And, and, and we wouldn't have a chance to take Wood Colony in. Anyway, one more time, kudos. Uh, the, other, the other motion that was made that night uh, when we were doing our general plan uh, vote was uh, John Gunderson. And he recommended that for the first time ever, the development actually pay for itself. Uh, I'm going to tell you development does a very good job of paying for the consequences of the day it, it develops. Um, they pay for extra roads, they pay for parks, they pay for new police or fire stations, the, that, that little margin that their growth is going to add on to. And, and the day they build, they paid for all the consequences of that day. But what they don't pay, and the, and the Ponzi scheme of development over the many years that we've been around, has been that um, they don't have any road maintenance for 20 years. And all the dollars that, that are generated out of theirs pay for the old road maintenance. And when they come along to need their roads maintenance, they hope that somebody else is building again. And it's really a Ponzi scheme that for both road maintenance and police and fire, they don't pay their way. And John Gunderson made a recommendation that, uh, that public safety, police and fire costs be borne by new construction. And that when they build more houses, they do a, 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 a CFD, a mellow roost on the new houses that pay for public safety. Um, I think, I think, um, I almost fell out of my chair, actually, when he made that motion. And uh, I, w I was so pleased. And, um, and it passed 4-3. Both of those passed 4-3, by the way. So we have a very tenuous situation. We need people that believe in making development pay for itself and not paving over our, our everything, using our land efficiently, and, uh, and mitigating what we do use. So anyway. Um, I talked about 132 that's going to get built, whether Scott likes it or not, unfortunately, for Scott. Uh, it's, it's basically, it's going to be, by the way, up for California Transportation Commission funding next month, I think, all the way, four lanes to Pellendale. Um, so... Um, Four lanes to Dakota, for, to Dakota. Um, I talked about all the money that the state's been continuing to take away from us. Part of our financial problems, not the downturn of the economy, but really uh, state and federal have had financial problems as uh, if that's, if anybody's surprised by that, you probably need to, you know, get more information. Um, and, and, and they have, they have really pushed that down to the, to the city level. The state's taken away one of our major funding sources used to be motor vehicle licensing fees. We made, we, the city of Modesto got about $12 million a year in that funding alone and um, will be zero next year. That's $12 million that's going to be gone forever because I don't think the state's all of a sudden going to go, Ah, we're rich, we're going to give it back to the cities. Um, so, so um, 
They took away RDA. That gave us a net of about $3 million a year that we could use for economic development locally. Just those two is $15 million that the city will never get back. Um, we tried to pass Measure X last year. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, how much time do you want me to have here, Neil? Um, another Five more minutes? Uh, eight minutes. Eight minutes, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to divert and tell you a little bit about writing my State of the City speech. I, I started writing bullet points while I was bowling on a Monday afternoon. <laughs> I, I, I bowl every Monday. If you ever want to come in and, and just have a few minutes with me, uh, 1 to 3.30, I'm, I'm there at the bowling alley. I like to do business while I bowl. And I'm sitting there knowing I need to write my State of the City speech, and I start writing bullet points. And I start off with Measure X and all the stuff that we're not going to be able to do for the city because of that failure. And I was, it, it was just like a black cloud over me as I'm writing down all these negative things that are going on. And I'm a very good bowler. I, I average around 220. And so I... I I shot 170 and 170 my first two games. And I'm writing all this negative stuff down and I'm kind of like, you know, and about toward the end of that second game I said, I have to put some positive bullet points down here about our city. You know, what's good going on? And so the, toward the end of the second game I started putting some good things. I struck out my 10th frame. And then I bowled a 250-something and a 250-something my last two games as I'm writing all the positive good things about our city. And there are a lot of good things. But because of the failure of Measure X, we're going to lay off more cops or reduce our, our total strength of cops. We're probably about 100 police positions under what we should be for a city our size. And it's directly related to... Um, to what I consider, so in, in crime reports, there's part one crimes and the rest. So part one are murder, rape, aggravated assault, armed robbery, larceny, which is stealing Christmas decorations off your front lawn, <laughs> auto theft, um, burglary, property crimes, stealing copper out of, out of things. So those are all part one. But if you look at that list, I, I put the I put them I divide them into two halves, the really bad stuff and then the bad stuff. So the really bad murder, rape, armed robbery, aggravated assault. We're about where the rest of the country is. I mean, it's not good, it's not bad. We're about average. But when it comes to property crime, we are off the chart on how bad it is here. Uh, Burglary, auto theft, number one in auto theft. Maybe we'll get to number two this year. Uh, um, uh, um, property crime, copper theft, you know, all those little, little things that are just like mosquito bites. I mean, they're, they're bad. They're not really bad, but they're bad. I think, this, I think this city is numb to the fact that we shouldn't have to live the way we're living. And, and I, I believe it's a direct correlation between how many police you have and how much property crime you have. If you have people patrolling, the cockroach, it's like they're like the light being turned on. The cockroaches go and hide. And if they're not patrolling, the cockroaches have free reign. And, and, they're, and they're out doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. Um, so. I hope to fix that with Measure X, we failed. And as a result, we're going to have to do more as citizens because we won't have the, re the, the, the public safety staffing to do that. I'm quite sure we're going to close a fire station. We'll probably brown out one or two fire stations every day uh, after this. Um, uh, we've been using, w w you'll, they, I don't think the report was done. I know they're working on it to show how many people in Modesto make over 100,000 a year. And it's just, it's just totally populated with police and fire people, by the way. And the reason is, is because our police and our fire have been operating on overtime 
to fill the spots to a min what they consider a minimum level of safety. And we're not going to do that. Uh, we have to balance our budget. We have to cut about $5 million out of this current year budget. And to do that, uh, it's going to, uh, over 80% of our budget for general fund is police and fire. And so we're going to have to cut police and fire. I mean, just. Um, so we opened Mary Grogan. Lots of people do good stuff for the city. Um, uh, I do want to. Um, I do want to mention one initiative we're going to work on this year, and that's um, hopefully, uh, um, hopefully, with the city's participation, we're going to we're going to go full force to try to eliminate graffiti. That that's something that we don't have to spend a bunch of dollars on. We're going to hire a volunteer coordinator whose job will be to uh, take reports on where graffiti is and hopefully we'll be able to generate hundreds and hundreds of volunteers that say I'll take care of my block, my, my area around my home or my business and get graffiti painted out if you let me know. So the coordinator will take the reports in and call up somebody and say there's graffiti two blocks away will you go paint it out. And, um, we're going to have, hopefully, get a smartphone application so you can pull your smartphone out, take a picture of it. The GIS will both show where that is and what, what, it, um, what it is. Coordinator will call up, get somebody to paint it out. And what we want to do is actually have it so that when it's painted out, they take a picture of it, paint it out, and send it back to the person reporting. Um, and, and hopefully, keep our city graffiti clean or, or pretty much so. Um, it's kind of like a broken window. Not very many people will throw a rock through uh, a building that has all its windows up. But if there's broken windows already, it's almost like you have permission to throw the rock through the next window. Um, and, and that's the way graffiti is, too. Uh, not very many people will be the first one to go put a big mark on a, a wall, but if there's one there already, it's almost like it's okay to say "me too," or or something. And and so we want we want to eliminate that, even though that's wrong thinking, by the way. But anyway, so I'd like to take questions. Okay, so why Kathy. haven't we put Center Plaza up for sale, closed the museum, closed the library, and done other things to generate more revenue? So um, very good questions. Thank you, Kathy. Um, so the Zinner Plaza costs us about six or seven hundred thousand dollars right now to run, uh, to operate. Um, first of all, it's RDA money. RDA is paying for it, and we can't lease it out. The, the DoubleTree would like to take it over and run it for us, but because it's bonded and RDA and uh, uh, redevelopment agency uh, funded. Uh, we can't do that. We'll probably end up browning it out, by the way, so that we basically bring our, our, our costs down to almost nothing, only run functions there that we can make money on and generate a positive cash flow, and, um, and maybe have the Doubletree do all of the f booking and, and that where it's a zero cost to the city. So that, that's one of our goals. So that, um, that would save it. We hope to go from six or seven hundred thousand in the next year down to two hundred thousand cost to the city, and and then to zero. I mean that's kind of our step line. But so what about the museum and the so mansion? So the museum and the mansion cost us almost nothing. They well, I don't want to say almost nothing. It costs us about a hundred and forty or fifty thousand a year to operate. Um, that's one and a half one in four fifth staff members and and some electricity and and so on um, we have 30 thirty thousand hours of volunteer support for those two and and so we could close them down and I, I I don't know the quote exactly but if you go back and look Winston Churchill was asked about eliminating the arts or something during World War II. 
And he said, without the arts, without our culture, what are we fighting for? And, and I, that's kind of my take on it. I think, I think the museum and the mansion are gems of our city. And, and I think it would be short-sighted to cut them off. Uh, though we probably will reduce their funding somewhat. Um, the, the big one for me is golf courses. We're going to spend about six or 700000 this year in support of the golf courses. And um, we have a report that says there are too many golf courses in Modesto to ever be financially um, um, well off. And uh, we're going to give it one more year for the golf courses, by the way, because we have a new group in. And we're going to go out to uh, new bids. But I think that quite likely I'd be surprised if we don't close a golf course next year, a year from now. And, uh, and that would be Dryden. And, um, and either sell it off or we're going to we have we do not have enough money to to continue to fund our police to continue to fund our fire to continue to fund our roads and to continue to fund our parks at the rate we are today and we're going to have to cut back on those Eric, what do you think that it's a prospect of the state restoring some version of rda to the cities uh, they'll probably do something, uh, Dave. I, I really do believe they're going to try to do something, but uh, it doesn't get. We were we were one of the. I don't know if it's few, but I know that we were one of. I'm playing with that. Does that hurt, uh, Richard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were one of the few cities that had were in the black. We, we were bringing about $6 million in in, in, um, in tax increment, and we had about $3 million in bond payments to make. That mean, meant we had about $3 million that we could use on other stuff. 20% um, was targeted to um, low-income housing. That's gone. Uh, the other was we could have used for fixing we wanted to redo J Street. We wanted to redo 10th Street, uh, kind of the lane, landscape and the way the streets are done and bulb outs and, and trees and all the rest. We could have done that with that money, and that's all gone. Uh, if they do restore something, I think we start off from zero again. And, uh, and so I don't think you're going to have a, a much of a benefit very quickly from it. Brad. I wanted to ask you about the road tax. I realize it's a, a countywide thing, but all nine cities are buying into it. I guess all nine councils so far have already endorsed the proposal to put a half cent 25 year road tax on November's ballot. And I just, I, I realize there's so, the so the poll results, but let me. Let me, let me, let me none, none of the cities have endorsed that, by the way. Oh, okay. Well, all of the cities endorse that if a road tax were to pass, they, they're agreeing to the split of it. And so, so uh, the, that was what the proposal was, was that if, if a road tax is passed, 47% will go to the cities, 47% will go to big projects, and 6% will go to alternative transportation. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about this package, because um, some people have pointed out that other counties in our valley, in the San Joaquin Valley, have passed similar road tax measures. Um, usually not for 25 years. I think Fresno's was 20 years, which even that sounds too long. But um, a much higher percentage was put into alternative transportation, senior assistance transportation, um, bike, bike lanes, public transit, buses, stuff like that in a valley where our air pollution is potentially horrible and it's already kind of bad. Seems like we ought to be encouraging a lot more biking and public transportation. If Fresno County could do it, if San Joaquin County could do it, it seems like 6%, that, that's almost nothing. That, so, so that means 94% goes for asphalt. Yeah. It goes for, for repairing existing roads, half of that <coughs> or goes for building new roads like North County Corridor, 
like the 132 extension, like some South County thing just to throw a bone to the South County people, but, which is silly, just to throw let, a bone. Let me interrupt you, put in a plug for our May meeting. That's going to be the discussion of our okay. Okay, So, fine. So I, I will say that the 47% that goes to the cities can be used for uh, pedestrian uses, uh, ADA compliance for one. It can be used for bike lanes. The city of Modesto now, we're, we're probably going to add $3 million to our current year, this, this current year that we're working in right now, uh, to do some new road work. And all of our road work in the city is including bike lanes or at least fog striping on, on all of them. So, so part of our 47% can be used for that. Um, I agree that we should be spending more on alternative transportation. Um, it was a compromise. It might not be the compromise you and I like. Um, I, I, I think it was short-sighted. There were actually city managers. So it was a compromise with the city managers, all nine of them, and the county staff. Um, trying to find out a formula that they could all agree to. Several of the city managers were holding out for 90% of the money to be used for local purposes. And, uh, and uh, the county and people like the Chamber of Commerce and so on wanted those business con connectors, uh, I'll call them. And, um, and, and to a degree, they, they won out. The county wanted us to base everything on miles of roads. And, and so for them, it was um, a, Pelland, a mile of Pellendale with six lanes was equal to a mile of Vivian out in the middle of the, the con country of, of two lanes, you know. So, uh, the cities all wanted lane miles, and they ended up compromising on, on, on what they got. It was a big compromise. It, nobody liked it. It was a bad taste for everybody. And uh, I, I agree, Brad, that we should have had more. Jenny really pushed, by the way, to get more senior, more senior, well, more, more for the, the, the senior, alternative. senior alternative. I tried, yeah, I tried this. And. Uh, I and and she got she got a little she got a little bit more by the way but uh, but uh, I think it's still inadequate. Don't you think there's a certain irony that a lot of people that were against Measure X locally and I realize that's a Modesto thing and this is a county thing are going to be for the road tax and I mean that's just totally bizarre. And well, uh, two city council people are a former city council and a current one that wouldn't even take a position on Measure X, their own city's safety plan are going to be for this road tax. And, and, and you know what it is, in my, you know, they talked about it a lot at the chamber. Uh, I, I, um, I had several meetings and it was kind of like, I want mine and not yours. You know, I'm afraid that if yours passes, mine won't. You know, I tried to tell them if, if, if one fails, they all fail. And they're doing a, they've been doing a poll. I don't, anybody get called? Anybody get a transportation? So they did a poll Sunday to Sunday. We'll find out the results on Wednesday night, by the way. Who did they call? Uh, they called 600 people in the, in the county. Um, and and I, I, I was telling Brad earlier, I read the poll, and it, it's kind of like, if you ever wanted a poll that wanted a no result, I mean, they actually wrote it that way. It was pretty. Um, I, if if they if they end up with a with a a result that says it's viable, I'll believe it. I mean, I really will because um, one of the questions was, would you um, would you support um, a four lane expressway from 108? east of Oakdale to 108 at McHenry and, and um, Clarabelle. And I'm going, who in the hell would even know what they're talking about? 
I mean, and so would you vote to, I mean, I mean, so that, that was actually, the, I think that was the question, you know. Would you support uh, 132 from 99 to the San Joaquin County line on a new alignment? How many people even know what that means? I mean, Scott does, but I mean, uh, most people wouldn't even know, have a clue at, at what the question was. And uh, I mean, it, it, was, it, was not, it was not made to get yes answers. And I think, I think the result will be less than 50%. That's, that's, my, that's my guess. Uh, we'll find out on Wednesday. It'll be an interesting. You gonna show up, Scott? I'll be there. <laughs> So anyway, other questions? Thank you. I really, I really appreciate your taking time for me. Mm -hmm.